I know all about Tree of Life. You don't know anything about Tree of Life. Wait, wait, sorry. That's the <laughs> that's the that's the wrong clip. Sorry. All right, here's the real one. I know all about Silent Hill. You don't know anything about Silent Hill. So, I've had a look at some of the comments in my previous videos and uh well, uh, let's just say I've uh I went to the bakery and bought myself a delicious humble pie and had myself a slice. See, my thoughts and opinions on the lore are generally that it's open to interpretation and that there's a lot of ideas that can be construed on your own in regards to how things work or what's actually happening, but that doesn't mean that everybody's opinion is automatically right about it, let alone my own. With that in mind, I've decided to no longer speak specifically on the lore of Silent Hill or the methodology of how anything supernatural works on it, primarily because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. With that in mind, though, I think it might be about time to discuss a little bit more about my opinions on the games in the series, as opposed to just elements of the story in the series. With that in mind, we're going to be tackling the western-developed Silent Hill games, with a few exclusions. We will not be doing Silent Hill Origins because I do not have a PSP and I don't know how to work the emulator for it. I'm such a plebeian. And we will not be covering Book of Memories because I don't want to play it. So with that in mind, let's begin with the rather infamous Silent Hill Homecoming. This game has problems, <laughs> to say the least. Let's begin with one of the biggest ones that a lot of people point at. Combat is a little too good. That's not me trying to misrepresent critics of this game, I hold the same opinion. The combat in this game is too good for what it's trying to be. We can look at the previous protagonists in the series, which were, in order, a father, an accountant, and a schoolgirl, and this made sense for the kind of gameplay they wanted to go for. A feeling of helplessness is something that is relatively consistent through a lot of survival horror games. Not that your character needs to be presented as helpless as much as you need to feel as if you're in a situation that's difficult to survive in, hence survival horror. And it made sense in those games that you would not do very well considering if you're just some random dad, or you're just some random accountant, or you're just some random schoolgirl, you're not going to necessarily know how to handle yourself that well in a fight, at least not up against supernatural terrors in a town that is constantly trying to pull tricks on you. So Homecoming, for reasons that will elude me, for ages and ages decided it would be a grand idea to cast you as a veteran who is very experienced in combat, and as a result, the gameplay is very much more fluid and easy as a result compared to previous entries. I'm not opposed to fluid gameplay. Of course, any really good action game has to have intuitive and fluid gameplay for it to be successful. The issue is we're not playing an action game, we're playing a survival horror. And don't get me wrong, new approaches to how games work in any given genre are completely fine. The problem we come across is it's hard to be scared of something if you know that you can adequately handle it in a fight. To the point where, no joke, the beginning weapon, the random knife that you get at the very beginning of the game, is one of the best weapons in the entire game. No joke, if you look up people who make strategy guides or walkthroughs for this game, they will tell you the same thing. The knife is very quick, and it can stunlock enemies very reliably, so... Even the enemies that I personally find to be very scary or intimidating have become a joke upon the revelation that you can take care of all of them with the starter weapon that never runs out of ammo, never breaks, and is really quick and easy to use. I'm telling you that outside of some very select instances, I use the knife for 90% of my playthrough and then use either the pistol or the shotgun for everything else. No exceptions, maybe the fire axe once, maybe the crowbar once. There is so much imbalance in this game that even if you try and defend it as being more of an action game, the fact that this was overlooked for the development team leaves a lot to be desired. And on the notion of different approaches, there's one thing I want to put across with this game. 
I do not dislike this game on the basis that it is different. It's gonna sound strange. I actually dislike this game for the reasons of it being the same. Every game in the series, despite the fact that they have a lot of commonalities and a lot of traits that people tend to love about the original games made by the Japanese developers, all of them tried something different. The first Silent Hill game was its own thing. The second one looked at what it did and it was like, I don't need your plot about cults and gods being reborn. I'm gonna go on a personal journey with my friend James. Let's go. Then the third one is like, screw your personal journey. I want to do some metaphors about femininity and I want to bring the cult shit back. Let's go do that. And then the fourth one said, I don't even need to leave my fucking apartment to do a Silent Hill game. And then we have Homecoming, which even though there's enough different about it from previous entries to make people upset, it has a noticeable inspiration from the Silent Hill movie. And the reason why this is relevant is because although all the Silent Hill games have taken inspiration from other films, none of them have, say, taken inspiration from themselves. The biggest one that I mentioned, if you watch this channel, is going to be Jacob's Ladder. And you can look towards other things, other horror masters. Cronenberg is definitely one that we can look to if we're talking about creature design or just general body horror that applies to the series as a whole. It is not a sin for horror games or gaming development to be inspired by movies or other media. But in this case, this game, Silent Hill Homecoming, is inspired by the movie of its own series rather than trying to do its own thing or trying to be like one of the previous games in a way that we consider to be a high quality. This leaves it feeling, to me at least, somewhat of an empty experience, with a lot of questions left unanswered, and not in a sort of intrigue and mystery way, but in a they did not think this through very well kind of way. Of particular note in regards to the foresight of the developers, Every game has some form of gag ending. There's the UFO ending, there's the dog ending, you know all of them. But, in this game, you can get the gag ending on your first playthrough, completely by accident. And this is what has happened to many people. They will get the gag UFO ending on the first time playing through, not understanding or knowing that it's the gag ending and thinking that that is canon or that's the real ending. I have no words for what kind of forethought could have gone into this, but you don't put your joke as something that can be done on the first try. I say this because every other game you have to beat it at least once before you can get the gag ending and there's usually special circumstances surrounding it. Nothing can break the tone of your game than having an incredibly tense and dark and brooding boss fight only to have it ruined by having your main character get captured by a UFO and then to have your buddy cop friend come out and say, I knew it was them all along! <laughs> so understand that that is my general takeaway from Homecoming. It is not a bad game on its own necessarily, but it is a poorly made survival horror game, it is not a well thought out Silent Hill game, and it is just generally a one that could use a lot of polish. Not just in the story department either, the technical side is desperate for some fixes and some patches. Do not buy this game on Steam. I could not get this game to run at more than 15 frames per second. It is a joke. Silent Hill Downpour is kind of an interesting case with me personally. I had just started playing Downpour right after I had beaten Silent Hill Homecoming. And I don't know if you could tell from my previous statements on it, but it left a bad taste in my mouth. Keeping this in mind, the bar was low. 
the bar for this game, based off of Homecoming, was set so low that as long as it wasn't subterranean, I would come out of it with a positive experience. And lo and behold, I was relatively pleased with Downpour. Now, it's got its fair share of problems. Okay, it has many, many problems. It is actually not a good game. But, it's kind of pleasant. This game definitely takes inspiration from other pieces of media. I definitely see a lot of prison films being the main thing, especially considering our main character, as well as other modern horror movies just to throw a sprinkle of inspiration into the mix. But the important thing is this. It does not try to be like other Silent Hill games, and it does not try and be like other Silent Hill media. This means that while it doesn't necessarily take after its predecessors in a way that fans would initially enjoy, it has enough going for it in its own right that I consider it to be spiritually in line with the thought that went into the previous games. Silent Hill 2, 3, and 4 were never trying to reinvent Silent Hill 1. They were trying to be their own games, and that shared uniqueness is what tends to make them so well-remembered for the fanbase, at least in my view. We can list one or two examples. The other world in this game seems to happen rather abruptly and act as an incredibly hostile force. In some cases, literally chasing you and trying to destroy everything in its path. Altering and changing the world immediately around you in an effort to try and harm you or guide you in a direction it wants you to go. Whereas in previous games, it would simply make the world slightly more dangerous, if not significantly more dangerous in more passive ways, we'll say. This is also a game that probably hasn't done something since Silent Hill 2, which is to make the town seem like more of a personal journey than a narrative one. And this is done through a combination of tactics that we've seen in the previous games, but sort of mishmashed together. You have choices of certain story events in the game, as well as a general moral score based on how you treat or act around enemies. This leads to multiple endings, all of which I consider to be, for the most part, satisfactory, although maybe some endings be a little bit too over the top for my taste. And it generally presents a really sort of interesting flavor to Silent Hill, presenting it more as a mystery to be solved than an enigma to survive. The various characters that you meet throughout the town, as well as numerous excessively dark and interesting side quests that you can do in the more open-world-esque nature of this town, bring a lot of life to it that we did not see in previous titles. Obviously, there were other things to do in previous games, but this sets it out to be more akin to the modern sense of side quests as opposed to the optional content of previous ones. And I'll say this, even if the main storyline doesn't seem appealing to you, I would at least recommend playing it for the side quests or maybe watching them on YouTube. As a note, while we're talking about YouTube, I did not actually have the capability to grab footage for either of these games off of my PS3, and neither of them are available on PC in a playable fashion, at least in the case of Homecoming. So, I am using footage from Survival Horror Network, a person who does long-style Let's Plays with no commentary on YouTube. I highly recommend his channel, he puts out a lot of good content, and he is more than gracious enough to do a lot of horror games for people who wish to watch them. This game also does a decent job of trying to do homages to previous games without explicitly trying to copy them. One minor example being that you can hear music tracks from the previous game, but they do have their own original compositions. This is the first Silent Hill game that does not have Akira Yamaoka doing the music, which is a tragedy truth be told, but it's not a bad score without him. And I'll say the only thing that I would consider to be lacking in this game, as well as in Homecoming, that can kind of sum up a lot of the problems I feel people have with the Western developed Silent Hill games is subtlety. There are some interesting and subtle moments in both of them, but for the most part, these games lack subtlety 
and a gentle touch to both horror, narrative, theme, symbolism, literally anything that you can think of involving this aspect. Now, subtlety isn't the reason why we play these games, but it is an important aspect as to why we remember these games, why we consider them to be classics in the first place. And we've had Western horror games that can do subtle things or do things in a more approachable way. It's just far and few between. I mean, you can just look at even a very simple example. I know of people, and this isn't hyperbole, and I don't even think this is unreasonable, who would rather play PT over and over again than to sit through either Homecoming or Downpour. And you know what? That's just fine. Let's live through that experience as much as we can for those of you who still have the opportunity to do so. To summarize my thoughts on these, if I were to give, say, a verdict about these games, I would probably give Homecoming, I'd say a 3, and I would give Downpour roughly a 7, maybe an 8 if I'm being especially generous about the way that the narrative is handled, honestly being very cinematic and at points kind of interesting, but that's not a good day. Obviously, I highly recommend the original three games, and we can go into more depth on them later, but for now, I wanted to put the Western games aside, simply for the point of showing the difference in attitudes between Eastern and Western design philosophy. One important thing of note for Downpour, though, and this is honestly one thing that makes it significantly better than Homecoming, its combat is not based around ease of combat, but it is actually based around stiffness of combat, but fluidity of motion. And I say this is important because this game actually encourages you to avoid or flee when given the option. You actually have a dedicated button to look behind you while looking forward so that if something is chasing you, you can peek behind, see if they're still chasing you, and then look back forward once you're sure that they're gone or if they're still chasing you. It's not utilized a ton in the game, but it's a really nice touch, especially since the morality score I mentioned earlier plays into which endings you get, and running away from enemies rather than confronting them or killing them does affect your morality score. It's not a genius Machiavellian addition to the game, but it absolutely sets it leagues above what Homecoming tried to do. With that in mind, I'm gonna bring a close to this. More Silent Hill will be coming in the future. We will absolutely be discussing the merits of each of the games in their own right. But before we get to those, we have a few other topics to consider, and I will not be hosting for you next time. See you around.